Hi everyone, it's Darlene. Welcome back for another card video. Today's card has a couple of different things. I'm doing some mirror stamping and I'm also coloring with colored pencils and some Gamsol. Here is the stamp set that I'm using. It's by Sunny Studio. It's called uh, That Sucks. and It's a pretty small, inexpensive set. I'm also using the Stitched Rectangles by Simon Says Stamp, my Prismacolor pencils, and then here is my bottle of Gamsol. I'm going to start by showing you the mirror stamping. I'm going to use the Misty, and uh, the reason is so that you can continuously stamp until you get a good image. The first thing I'm going to do is stamp the original stamp. Um, I'm going to ink it up with some VersaFine Black Onyx ink. This is some pigment ink. It stays wet for a long period of time, and that's why I'm using it. And I want to use it on my first vacuum because I want to use consistent ink on both. All right, once I stamp that, now I'm going to really clean off my stamp well. And then I'm going to remove the foam backing from my Misty. And that's because I'm going to double up on my stamps here and you'll see in a second. So I'm going to use my grid sheet and it's not for lining up. I'm using it because I need something for my stamp to stick to. So I've turned it upside down so that the image side is facing up and I want to place it on my grid sheet exactly where it needs to be. And it kind of sticks every time you put it down, so you have to kind of uh, maneuver it around a little bit till you get it where you want it. Now the idea here, here is to stamp this onto something that you can then stamp again. So just find a background stamp that you have that's maybe mostly solid, um, and what I'm going to use is the back side. So not the side with the image, but the other side. And so I'm really just looking for something solid. Now there are some stamps you can buy for this purpose, mirroring stamps. I don't have any, so I'm just using a stamp that I have on hand. So I placed it on top of my vacuum, and it's going to stick when I lift up the lid of my Misty, but that's fine. I just peel away the vacuum and the grid sheet, keeping those intact because I've already placed it on the grid sheet. I could always change it if I need to. I just need to make sure that my solid stamp is gonna go over the entire vacuum. So placement doesn't have to be perfect on that. All right, now I'm gonna ink up that vacuum again with my Versamark ink, and now I'm going to close the lid, and now you see why we had to take the foam piece out is because we have kind of, we have two stamps, and the foam just kind of makes it a little too crowded. So once I stamp it on the back of that stamp, I could put my foam back in, and then uh, I'm gonna close my lid and it'll transfer that image onto my cardstock. So when I open it here, you'll see that it definitely is stamped, but it's pretty faded. And that's why using the Misty is great because you can do this as many times as you want. So I'm just gonna put my grid sheet back in that has my stamp on it, and then I'll ink it up again and then I'll have to take out that foam pad because it's too crowded with the two stamps together. And then I can close my lid and transfer that image once again onto the back of that Ellen Hudson stamp that I'm using. And I'll be in the right spot because I'm using the Misty. And then I can open it up and then again take off um, the grid sheet with the stamp and then put the foam back in and transfer the image again. Now I tried this with some Memento Tuxedo Black ink and I didn't get as uh, results that are as good. I think because the pigment ink takes longer to dry so it stays wet and long enough for you to transfer that image. So you can see it's not totally perfect but rather than risking doing this over and over and over again and possibly something moving and messing up, I decided to just go ahead and uh, outline over this whole thing. This stamp has really thick lines, and that could also be why it's a little bit faded after doing it twice, and you might get better images with thinner lined stamps. And I'm using my Stampin' Up! black marker because it is a pretty uh, thick, wide tip. And so once I colored over it with my marker, it looks great. So then I took the three sentiments that were in the set, and I stamped them with the Misty using some Hero Arts uh, black ink and I used Hero Arts here because I wanted it some, something fast drying because I didn't want it to smudge. I tend to do that. Okay, so now I'm going to move on to coloring my vacuum. Now I'm going to pour some of this into just kind of a palette I have. It does not pour well at all and um, no matter how I poured it or where I poured it, I tried putting it in the lid and that made a huge mess. Um, so just kind of be careful and be prepared to wipe things up. Now it will stain your craft mat, however the stain does fade over time, like by the morning it'll be gone. I'm just using two colors. Uh, the first one is called Beige Sienna 
and I'm just gonna color the corners of my vacuum just in different areas and I didn't put enough color I'm gonna add some more later um, but I'm just making sure that I get all of the shadow areas colored and I went ahead and colored both of the vacuums together so I'm just gonna apply the Gamsol uh, to both of them and notice I just put a tiny little bit because you really don't need much at all um, so once I get this color laid, I'm going to use a, a Sukineko Fantastics um, and they're just kind of like these foamy sort of pens, not a pen, but it's foam, um, pointer sticks, I guess you could say. And you dip it in the Gamsol and then you just sort of go over the color and pull it out over the rest of the, the area. And it's breaking down the color and spreading it out. It does a really good job of doing it. The only thing is that you can tell that it turns my paper gray uh, where it's wet. So it's really hard to tell if I've got a good blend. Um, and so I kind of have to let it dry for a little bit to see where my color is. Now I could tell based on how much gray area I had that I didn't have enough color on these vacuums. So while it was still wet, you can still do it while it's wet, it's just put more color down. And so I had only put it on one side of the front of the vacuum, so I added more color to the other side. And this is a really light color too. And I'm trying not to press down too hard so that it kind of gets into the grooves of the paper. I kind of want to keep it loose on the top of the paper. So notice I didn't dip my stick again because there's plenty of Gamsol on it. So I just went back over it and uh, blended out the color. And then I just quickly did the handles in this same beige sienna color and then my uh, uh, Gamsol on top of it. I'm gonna use the same Fantastics for the next color. So I'm just gonna wipe it off on a piece of scratch paper and then I can start with a new color. My next color is called Parma Violet. It's just a really pretty purple. And again, I'm just gonna color inside the shadow areas. And uh, mostly it's kind of the back edge, the front edge. And then I chose one side of the line to go um, to, to add some color to. And I, and I used the left side of the line on the vacuum in the front, the vacuum bag. And then the side is really not gonna matter too much. I'm just gonna blend that color out all together. There's really not gonna be a lot of shading. All right, so now I'm gonna dip into some more Gamsol and then color this and pull the color out toward that white area. And I didn't feel like I need to, like when you're water watercoloring, you would start in the white, move to the color, and then move back to the white. I just sort of colored the whole thing, and especially the line between, just on the edge of the color. Um, and so it just kind of blends on its own. And you can see how pretty it looks and it's really super easy to do. You don't have to worry about um, you know, pulling color into different areas. You just color the shaded area with your pencil and then just color the whole thing on top with the Gamsol and everything blends the way it should. I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side, but this time I'm gonna do a little bit darker and then I'm gonna get a little lighter with the pencil as I get toward the center of the vacuum. And this is gonna sort of give me um, a better fade with the Gamsol. So you can see when I go back over this, it uh, pulls the color, uh, it kind of blends the color into the paper so that it's nice and smooth. And, uh, and it looks just like the other one. But I noticed that the other one had a little bit more of an edge to the color. Um, and that's what I tried to fix when I was doing the second one. So I just took a very, very light hand, added a little bit more purple to the edge and blended it out and it looked really nice. So I saw that same line kind of um, on that left edge and did the same thing and now it looks great. So uh, then I'm gonna do the handles the same uh, purple color. Now you can see that the Gamsol is kind of creeping over the edge. It's pretty significantly of my image. And I didn't want to stamp the happy faces while it was still wet, so I let it dry for probably, I don't know, 30 minutes or so, and you can see those, those, um, those creeping lines of seepage are gone. So it does dry eventually. So I'm gonna stamp these happy faces. The set comes with a bunch of different faces because it's got an I'm sorry sentiment with an unhappy face. Um, so I just decided to make mine happy and of course the vacuums need to be on carpet So I just grabbed a W1 Copic marker and I just kind of dotted a little bit of a textured look on the edge Pulling out the left side and the right side and connecting them in the middle My design is having this hang down from the top of the card So I'm going to hang my rectangle die off the top so that I'm going to get stitching on three sides But not on the top 
Next, I'm going to work on my background. I have a piece of sea glass cardstock by Simon Says Stamp and my fluff background stamp by Impression Obsession. I love this stamp so much. I've gotten so much use out of it. It could be wind, it could be fire. In this case, it's kind of air, vacuum sort of suction air. So I'm going to ink it up with some Versamark ink and then I'm going to put my cardstock on top of it. And uh, you could just leave it a tone on tone with the Versamark and you get a really faded look. But I wanted to make mine a little bit more prominent, so I'm just going to sprinkle it with some clear embossing powder and heat it to set it. And then I'll take my uh, vacuum panel, I'm going to add some twine to the top. This is some Doodle Bug Black Beetle Twine. I'll put some ATG Tape Runner on the back about where I want my twine to be. And then I'll just wrap it around so that both edges wrap around to the back and stick back there. I always, I never try to like tie a bow around like that. I always add a bow later. So I'll form a bow. And then before I put the bow on, I'm going to go ahead and put some scotch foam tape on this panel and stick it to the top of my sea glass panel. And then I might as well go ahead and put this on my card base. Now notice I could have made the sea glass my card base, but I don't really like to heat emboss the card base because I want it to be nice and solid and crisp and straight. So I went ahead and just added this to a card base Nina Solar White. Now I'm going to take a glue dot and I'm going to put it where I want my bow to be. And I can always move it. That's what I like about using the glue dots rather than some liquid adhesive. And I use a paper piercer to get it off the roll. And then I'll just press my uh, ribbon on there and now it's set and not going anywhere. And that is the card for today. So I hope you enjoyed that mirror stamping and the Gamsol coloring. And I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.